Hey folks, I wanted to give an introduction to the persistent homology algorithm uh, using an example. So the persistent homology algorithm is now described in many papers and books and videos, but I'll be following the matrix algorithm from this book, Concretational Topology by Edelsbrunner and Herer. And the example I'll be using is a filtration coming from the paper, Computing Persistent Homology by Zoma Rodian and Carlson. So the input to the persistent homology algorithm is an increasing sequence of simplicial complexes. And then what the output is, is the persistent homology barcodes, which tell you the homology at each stage in the filtration, but also the persistence information, how holes or features map to each other as the space increases. So in this particular example, I've drawn the zero dimensional barcodes in blue and the one dimensional barcodes in purple. So the zero dimensional barcodes just encode connected components. So at stage one, we have two connected components that are born. One connected component corresponding to A is gonna live for other, forever. Uh, the connected component corresponding to B, it joins up and so it dies. Um, at stage two. But at stage two, a new connected component is born, and then it lasts until stage three, where it joins up. And if you look at one-dimensional holes, the first one-dimensional hole is born at stage three, and it persists until stage six, when it is filled in. And the second one-dimensional hole appears at stage four, and it persists until stage five, when it is filled in. Okay, so let me go through the algorithm to show you how to compute these bars. I'll be showing the matrix algorithm. There's a way you can sort of compress the data structures and store things as vectors instead of matrices, but matrices uh, um, illustrate the mathematics behind the algorithm. So what, what I've drawn here is the boundary matrix. after I've ordered the simplices in the order in which they appear. So A and B appear in the first stage, C and D and these edges A, B and B, C appear in the second stage, etc. And within a stage, I order the simplices by dimension. Okay, so at stage two, I have both vertices and edges appearing. I have to put all the vertices first and then all the edges. The boundary matrix records the boundary of each simplex um, as in the columns. The boundary of vertices are just empty, so that's why these columns are empty. The boundary of an edge, AB, is just its two vertices, A and B. So I've put ones here to encode, encode that the boundary of this edge, AB, is the vertex A plus the vertex B. I'm using Z mod 2Z coefficients, so that's why there's no signs. And the boundary of edge BC is vertex B and vertex C. The boundary of edge AC is the vertex A and the vertex C. And the boundary of a triangle is three edges. So the boundary of the triangle ABC is these three edges, AB, BC, and AC. Now, the persistent homology algorithm uh, proceeds by reducing this matrix. Roughly speaking, well, here's the algorithm. I'm not going to go through the details. I'll just say sort of out loud what you do. You look at your current column from 1 up to n, and you iterate through all of the columns. n is the number of columns. Okay. So we're looking at current column J. While there exists an earlier column whose lowest one is in the same spot as our current column, then we add the earlier column to our current column. All right, that's the algorithm. And then once we're done, we'll have this reduced boundary matrix from which we can read off the persistent homology bars. So let's start with column one. It's empty, so there's nothing to do. And same with columns two, three, and four. I get to column five. There's no earlier column with the lowest one in the same row, so there's nothing to do. I get to the next column. 
there's no earlier column with the lowest one in the same row, so nothing to do. Same thing here. There's no earlier column with the lowest one in the same row, nothing to do. Finally, I get to the column corresponding to edge CD. Its lowest one collides with the lowest one of an earlier column, and therefore I'm going to add this earlier column. And when I add, I add with Z mod 2Z coefficients. So to this one, I'm going to add this one to get zero. This is going to be zero. And then to this zero here, I'm going to add this one to get one. So this is going to become a one. And as you see, I got a one here, and this changed to a zero. And let's record that I have added the column associated with edge AD to this column. Okay. I keep going with my algorithm. I'm still on this column. I'm not yet done. Here's my lowest one in this column now. There is an earlier column with the same, uh, with its lowest one in the same row. So I add this earlier column. I'm going to get a zero here and I'm going to get a one here. All right. And then here's my lowest one. There is an earlier column with its lowest one in the same row. So I add this earlier column and I'm going to cancel. Both these ones are going to become zeros. All right. So this column is now empty. So there's nothing more to do. I move on to this column. Its lowest one collides with an earlier, with a lowest one from an earlier column. So I add this earlier column and I'm going to get a zero and a one. And now again, I have a lowest one that collides with an earlier column. So I add this earlier column and I'm going to cancel this out. Okay, we only have two columns left. We move on to this column. Its lowest one co doesn't collide with the lowest one from an earlier column. So we move here. This lowest one does collide with the lowest one from this earlier column. So I add the earlier column. I'm going to get a zero, a one, and a one. All right. So this matrix is now reduced. It's our reduced boundary matrix. And from this reduced boundary matrix, we can read off the persistent homology. Why is it reduced? It's reduced because each lowest one in, a, in, in, in any column is sort of in its own unique row. And those lowest ones that are in their own unique rows, those are called the pivots. So here are the pivots of this reduced boundary matrix. And it's these pivots that really sort of um, determine the pairing that gives you persistent homology, essentially. When reducing the boundary matrix, you're sort of changing dimension on the, um, sorry, you're cha sort of changing basis. You're changing basis on the, on the group of chains and uh, you're changing basis to find a convenient basis to represent cycles and boundaries is what you're doing in the, in the language of homology. Okay, so I need to show you how to read off the persistence barcode from this matrix. I'm gonna label each uh, persistence interval with the simplex whose birth, whose appearance gives birth to that interval and with the simplex whose appearance uh, kills off that interval. So let's start with one dimensional homology in, in purple. The generators for homology are the cycles, the things with zero boundary. Those are going to be our empty columns because you know these are things that when I take their boundary, I get zero. So when I have the sum of these four edges, AB plus BC plus CD plus AD, when I take its boundary, um, I get zero. So this is going to give birth to a one-dimensional feature. Okay, so empty columns give births to features. This one dimensional feature appears at time three. Okay, so it's going to be this bar. How do I find when this feature dies? Well, this feature first appeared um, with edge CD. 
So now, now I go to the row corresponding to CD, and I ask, is there a pivot in this row? There is. That tells me the death time of this feature. This feature that was born at time three is now killed at time six. Okay. And furthermore, you can see the chain that filled in this feature. The chain that filled in this feature was the sum of two triangles. Right? This hole corresponding to four edges was killed when these two triangles filled in. So there's a lot of geometry you can read off. Here's another empty column that also gives birth to a one-dimensional hole. It's this one-dimensional hole that's born at time four. Okay. And it's this triangle, A, B, B, C, um, A, C. And then A, C was the edge whose appearance gave us this triangle. So I look at the row corresponding to A, C, and I ask, is there a pivot in this row? There is. And that pivot tells me when this feature dies. It dies at time five. So that's why this bar that was uh, born with the edge AC dies with the triangle ABC. And again, you see this hole is filled in by this triangle. Stepping back a moment, um, if you only want to describe the homology at this stage, there's no reason you needed to use the square and the triangle to represent the two holes. You could have used the two triangles, but the persistent homology algorithm finds a consistent basis that works not only at this stage, but also at all other stages. For example, including this stage where you need to have the square as one of your generators of this one dimensional loop. All right, so these were the empty columns you know, corresponding to edges that gave us one dimensional holes. Let me also look at the empty columns corresponding to vertices, which are gonna give our zero dimensional persistent homology intervals, okay? So vertex A has an empty column. It's gonna give birth to this infinite interval. When you look at the row corresponding to A, there's no pivot in this row, right? You know, this isn't a pivot because there's a lower one. This isn't a pivot because this is there's a lower one. So since there's no pivot in this row, this feature is unpaired and it lives on forever. Here's another empty column. B gives birth to a zero dimensional connected component. We look at the row corresponding to B. It has a pivot. So this connected component that was born at B dies when this edge AB appears, connecting it to something um, that had already appeared, A. So that gives this bar right here. C is an interesting one. You'll notice geometrically that C appears at the same time this edge appears. So it, it shouldn't really give an interval of any length. So we look at C, it is an empty column, okay? So it does give birth to a zero dimensional feature. But when we look at the row, um, we see that there's a pivot that says that C was born at times two, but it, it, this feature dies also at time two when this edge appears. Okay. So this feature sort of is born and dies at the same time. And that's why we don't draw a bar, bar for it. And lastly, let's get to this empty column corresponding to vertex D, okay? So it appears at, at scale two, it's gonna give us this bar. I look at the row corresponding to D to find this pivot. And, and this pivot is telling me at that, that at time three, there's an edge AD that appears connecting D to earlier stuff. So that's why this bar that was born at time two dies at time three. All right, so thanks so much for your time and attention. I didn't give a full rigorous introduction to this algorithm, but I, I hoped to uh, walk through it on an example so you get to see some of the moving parts. And I hope to explain some of the geometric intuition that you should focus on when you're trying to learn and understand this algorithm. Thanks so much.